uh, this is Chan Yu Huang. Uh, I'm going to talk about our paper, Laban, Perception Aware Optimization of Power Consumption for Mobile Games. This work is collaborated with Somei Pushif, who is a co-primary author. And is there any problem? Oh, okay. Chang Yang Go, Zhang Pil Yun, Yun Xin Liu from Microsoft Research, Tung Pio Choi, and my advisor, Juna So. Uh, in these days, the mobile devices are rapidly evolving. Uh, they are equipping larger displays, <coughs> more powerful processors, and bigger batteries. Also, mobile games are evolving with better graphics quality and enhanced interactivity. But still, we cannot enjoy mobile games long enough. Why? The main reason is heavy graphics processing. For better graphics, modern mobile games uh, use more power for processing. Also, they require heavy processing very frequently to draw 60 frames per second. Per second. Uh, by the way, do they really need to draw all 60 frames in a one second window? I don't think so. Oh, sorry. Oh. Actually, mobile games draw some useless frames that we call perceptually redundant frame. Let me show you an example. Uh, these two frames are consecutive frames in a game. Do you see any difference between the images? Uh, <coughs> in fact, those images are different in pixel level. However, those are uh, really uh, hard to recognize by uh, human eyes. So the frame on the right side is perceptually redundant frame, and drawing this frame is unnecessary because uh, it does not make any visual change in the human eyes. Interestingly, perceptually redundant frames are common in mobile games since the games are not very in, uh, mobile games are not very intensive. The graph shows the proportion of perceptually redundant frame in uh, 10 mobile games. It is counted using structural similarity, SSIM, with uh, the threshold of 0.97. As you see here, in the eight of 10 mobile games, the proportion of perceptual similarity were more than 50%. It's a very large amount. And if we reduce the amount of renderings to half, then we can extend battery life 42% more. It is very promising. Then, how can we reduce perceptually redundant frames in mobile games? It's our research question. There are some works about reducing frame, rate, uh, frame renderings. The most primitive approach is limiting the frame rate. It can effectively reduce power consumption, but it has significant side effect, uh, user, ex user experience degradation. Uh, to mitigate the side effect, some works exist to adjust frame rate by using hints such as pixel value changes or uh, user input. However, those approaches still have uh, side effects that degrade user experience. Uh, next, let's see our solution approach. As solution, we present a system Laban. Laban regulates uh, rendering of perceptually redundant frames by our noble method, perception aware scaling of, uh, <laughs> of frame rendering rate. In higher level, it is simply twofold. First, it predicts the perceptual similarity of current frame to upcoming frames. Second, it skip rendering frames if the next fr upcoming frames are predicted to be to, uh, very similar. Here is a short video demo of our proposed solution. The FPS bar shows the average FPS in one second window. You can see it works seamlessly while skipping frames. I will dis uh, briefly describe our system. Laban is developed by customizing Android framework, and it consists of 
three parts, app tracker, R regulator, and R injector. And they, are, they work in a pipeline fashion. First, app tracker leads a frame and measure the perceptual similarity of current to previous frame. Second, our regulator predicts the perceptual similarity of current frame to next upcoming frames using the uh, yeah, current uh, similarity calculated in app tracker. And it deci decides the number of frames to skip using some threshold values. After that, our injectors keep rendering uh, next K frames. The K is decided by the R regulator. Next, te technical challenges. In the design of uh, Raven system, there were uh, the main technical challenges are achieving low overhead, hard real-time processing, and supporting commercial devices and game applications. Uh, we overcame the challenges by developing three key ideas. Wide difference-based perceptual similarity prediction and leading low resolution virtual display and customizing Android graphics architecture. To predict perceptual similarity efficiently, Raven used the history of Y differences. Using the recent Y difference and its moving average, uh, Raven predicts the SSIM of current and upcoming uh, of current to upcoming frames by linear regression. Since Laban is predicting SSIM, it seems natural to use history uh, use the history of SSIM for the prediction. However, SSIM is too heavy to run on mobile devices, and it cannot support real-time processing. Let's see what is the Y difference. Y difference is a summation of luminance value difference for each pixel. It is based on the characteristics of the human visual system. That is uh, sensitive to luminance, luminance difference uh, in, for in detection of motion, motion or structure of objects. Also, it is energy efficient because the computations are simple. Y difference is also a good approximation of SSIM. As you can see here, they are in a linear relationship. So SSIM can be predicted by using Y difference. The next key idea is leading a low resolution virtual display. Virtual display provides frames with low overhead in real time by using hardware composer which is a uh, specialized hardware for composing frames in Android. Also, Raven can use low resolution frame to save more energy. Since Y difference is working at very low re resolution, uh, very, re low, sorry, very low resolution. So by reading low resolution frames, Raven can read frames in real time with low overhead. And by combining or customizing, uh, combining or and customizing Android graphics architecture, we successfully developed the Raven to satisfy the requirements. In detail, we added an Android system service and modified an OpenGL function in Android. The system service leads a clone virtual display and decides the number of frame, skipping frames. After that, it sends the value to our injector, which is implemented by customizing an OpenGL function. After receiving the value, our injector applies an appropriate delay in the, in the, rendering, of the uh, rendering thread of games. Then, the thread will be stopped and the frame renderings will be skipped for the delay. The next section is evaluation. We evaluated Raven in three aspects, power consumption, visual quality difference, and user experience. And we categorized the target workload into three groups. First, static games. They are showing static objects and simple graphical effects. In these games, perceptually redundant frames are frequently rendered. 
Second, dynamic games. In these games, the graphical contents on display are continuously changing, and the perceptually redundant frame, uh, frames are not common. And the uh, third is hybrid games. They have mixed characteristics of dynamic and static games. Also, we compared the four settings in the evaluation. Uh, there are two baselines. 60 FPS is or original, and 30 FPS is skipping up frame every two frames. We also set label enabled setting. UPath stands for user friendly perception aware scaling, which is tuned to make no such difference to 60 FPS. EPath is energy friendly PAS. Uh, it is tuned to skip more frames than uh, UPath. To see the power saving effect, we measure the power consumption of eight games. In the result, Laban successfully saved energy up to 30%. In average, EPAS saved 22% and UPAS saved 8% of energy. But in dynamic games, it, UPAS did not save energy. It's because UPAS did not skip frames to prevent user experience degradation. And to compare the visual quality for each settings, we used visual quality assessment model. They result in the visual quality difference of reference and target videos in the perspective of human eye. We recorded 13 game play videos and made the target videos by simulating our settings. After that, we compared using two models, VMAF, which is the state of art video quality model made by Netflix and SSIM. In the result, S, uh, U, UPass and EPass showed almost same visual quality to original on both models. Uh, to see how Raven affects user experience of mobile games, we conducted two tests. First is blind, and the second is comparative test. The tests are conducted with 12 participants and three games representing each game category. In the blind test, the participants scored their user experience in zero to 100 scale after playing the game. You can see that label enabled settings have similar score distribution to 60 FPS, ex except cookie run with EPAS. In comparative tests, we directly compared EPAS and 60 FPS and the participant scored uh, rated the user experience degradation of EPAS in five scale, from very annoying to imperceptible. Except cookie run, most of participants uh, scored either imperceptible or not annoying. That is similar to the result in blind test. And in cookie run case, some small movements were regarded as perceptually redundant in EPAS, and people were very sensitive to those sudden wrong frame skipping. I want to skip, I'm going to skip this question because of time limit. In conclusion, Laban reduces perceptually redundant frame renderings using PA pass method, and we overcame technical challenges using three, uh, developing three key ideas. Why difference based perceptual similarity prediction, reading a row, low resolution virtual display and customizing Android grape architecture. Also, we showed that Laban saved energy consumption on mobile games while maintaining quality user experience. It's the end. Thank you for listening and please feel free to ask any questions.